Hello, everyone. Hope everyone is good. And we're gonna start getting started since everyone is pretty much here. And basically, yeah, really happy to have you all here. Next to me, it's Pablo and Emilia, and I'll briefly introduce them first, and then we can get started. Hey, Pablo, hey, Emilia. So welcome to the CITAC Lab, deep diving into the contextual universe. I am truly delighted about this webinar, three weeks after the public release of CITAC Lab and the amount of excitement among our customers has been overwhelming. And today we want to show you how CTAC Lab works and how you can envision and build your contextual universe. As a reminder, please know that this webinar is being recorded and we invite you to ask any questions you may have at the question box in the Zoom application. I will personally select a few questions after the presentation and ask our two presenters. But who are they? Well, I'm really happy to present today my colleagues, Emilia Kirk and Pablo Martinez. Emilia is the Global Head of Growth at CITAC. She has over 15 years of experience in digital advertising within the contextual and native space. Emilia has worked for companies such as Avid Media and Densu in the UK and the US. Emilia is now in charge of boosting CITAC growth through sales enablement and contextual insights for brands and partners. Pablo is the product lead for contextual intelligence at CITAC. He's an aeronautics engineer that has worked in management consulting for various industries in several regions in more than three continents. He has been in CTAC for over a year now, impulsing how we use contextual data, how LIS, our contextual intelligence AI, analyzes thousands of articles every minute and how all this data is crunched to offer new opportunities and insights to our customers and partners. With no further ado, I leave you with these two talented colleagues to enlighten and share how CTAC Lab takes least insights to uncover new opportunities for you. Guys, this is all yours. Great, thank you for the intro, Jordi. And to everyone who's dialed in to hear about CTAG Lab, it's great to have you here. So in terms of what we'll be talking through today, the contents of this webinar are as follows. So uh, we'll be covering the challenges we're addressing in the marketplace and the why we created CTAG Lab. And then moving on to some real life examples of contextual and excellent brand messaging and placement. So bringing inspiration to the digital world. How CTEG Lab is delivering impact, a run through of the lab methodology, um, a lab execution example, and then last of all, a deep dive into a bespoke content universe that we recently created for one of our clients. So why did we uh, create CTEG Lab? So Fundamentally, so this was to address some of the challenges that we're facing in the digital world today. Um, the fight for attention, we know that it's increasingly difficult to grab the attention of and uh, retain the attention of online consumers due to the number of infinite content choices that they have available to them. Uh, we know that only four out of 100 ads actually gain more than one second of attention, which only really presses home the urgency of this point. Um, secondly, the importance of placing your brand's messaging alongside relevant content. So placement of your brand's messaging is key and if placed alongside negative or relevant content this creates a negative perception of your brand and then last but not least you know the fact that we are now living in a privacy first world so knowing who and how data is being used is incredibly important to online consumers and due to some breakage of online trust uh, now really is the time to rebuild those valuable relationships and rebuild that value exchange so the key question that we're really looking to answer is, how can brands connect now with consumers in an effective and respectful way? So we wanted to share some examples of real life brand messaging and placement that really works. And as we know, how you're being placed and where you're being placed in any form of environment is insurmountably important. So we know that being placed somewhere prominent, um, where you can be seen, will guarantee to gain eyeballs and attention. And you can see here this example of the logo and half pipe. And this flip-flop being placed in a beach not only fits in with the environment, it's reminding individuals of a need they need to fulfill, and it blends in perfectly with its surroundings. Um, also providing hint of humor, which is guaranteed to spark a memory and increase the likelihood of recall. And then an example of an ad, uh, blending in so perfectly with the environment, it takes on the look and feel of where it's being placed, hardly looking like an ad in any way. And then we have the ads that continue to be situated perfectly in their surroundings. So this is resonating with the consumer, it's speaking to them directly, 
Um, it's again, it's addressing a need or sparking hope and um, it assumes multiple meanings in its messaging. And then we have ads that connect and respond to other variables uh, like the weather. So Hello London, it's going to uh, be a hot one. So this is a form of dynamic creative optimization, DCO, and again, responding to surroundings and creating a need. And then last but not least, we have ads that respond to the current cultural environment. So this example of the weather um, and a COVID ad. So again, an example of brands responding to external influences and using whatever medium they have to still connect and be relevant. So going back and, and thinking about the question, how can brands connect now with consumers in an effective and respectful way? So looking at those examples and thinking about the optimum way in delivering messaging, our conclusion and answer to this is by delivering relevant messages that are fully integrated within content and aligned with consumers' interests in real time. And our formula to do this is based on three key pillars to maximize brand impact. So first of all, by leveraging contextual intelligence, um, secondly, by creating high attention placements, and then thirdly, by delivering these placements into premium brand safe content. And to reiterate um, how we're delivering impact with lab, we're using AI contextual intelligence to define a data-driven content strategy for our clients, delivering optimal content match and value and improved brand perception. Because improving perception, delivering connections and driving resonance is key to making your brand perform. So moving on to why we're all here and what exactly is CTAC Lab. So this is our definition of the program and it is as follows. So it is an exclusive program that's been developed to help your brand find a data-driven content strategy to differentiate them from their competition by boosting their unique values. And how we execute labs and build a content strategy is crafted on three key pillars to maximize impact on the consumer. So first of all, we start by defining the exact territory based on contextualization um, with respect to your brand's objectives and values. Secondly, we'll look at trend identification. So identifying these key communication moments to impact consumers when they're most likely to respond to your messaging. And then thirdly, contextual creative design. So ensuring that your assets and creative are seamlessly integrated into publisher content, uh, the taking on the look and feel of the page, um, as we saw with the Predator ad um, earlier on. And how lab works is in three key stages. So pre-campaign, we devise a content strategy in line with the client's uh, objectives and values. Uh, this also includes contextual creative design and then looking at trend identification. During campaign, we'll deliver the activity on the tailored content universe that we created for your brand. Um, it includes uh, CTAG reporting, uh, weekly optimizations, uh, but the difference between lab and a standard CTAG campaign is that we offer a designated mid-campaign learning session. We run through results of brand of studies, um, category performance and so forth and provide actual campaign insights. And then post-campaign, we'll provide a full wrap-up of uh, the competitive analysis, the brand of studies that we offer, which includes unique contextual insights. And then really, and most importantly for us, is to really assess the uh, consumer perception. So are consumers viewing you in the same way that you want to be perceived? And bringing this program to life and using our in-house expertise to deliver transformational value is the lab team. So this spans the areas of data science, partnerships, design, and account management. So moving on to CTAG technology and touching on the topic of contextual targeting. So obviously we know that contextual uh, has been around for a number of years. Um, in its most basic form, it's included keyword targeting but it now incorporates uh, machine learning and big data to give answers to advertisers' most uh, complicated challenges. So CTAG's approach technology incorporates multiple variables to generate deep level page categorization and human-like understanding of any page. So we move from site level analysis through URL, um, page level text analysis, full page, and then full network analysis. So this inco incorporates um, the following variables. So vertical categorization, uh, keyword targeting, whitelisting and blacklisting, a semantic embedding, um, so really understanding nuances and tone and sentiment, um, analysis of content, so using NLP techniques um, and analyzing metadata, and then conducting content listening, so really understanding topical trends and relevancy of keywords and concepts. And all of this culminates in our total holistic network analysis. 
So let's start with the first uh, pillar of the content strategy and territory definition and how we build a bespoke content universe. So what you're seeing here is a full analysis of CTAD's network and each uh, circle or bubble, shall we say, represents keyword concept of value within each of the core network, network verticals. And we build territories on two things. So first of all, we start with something called the sea territory, and then this moves into territory expansion. So with the sea territory, we use Liz, which is our contextual AI, and Liz C generate analysis uh, to extract relevant information from a brand's web page. So we mine and extract core terms and phrases which are in line with their core values and objectives. And uh, we have an example here of a client who were focusing on proving. Um, or improving their corporate social responsibility. And so we created a seed territory based on core topics in line with promoting those values. This is why you can see the terms such as uh, packaging, recycling, um, inclusion, diversity on the right-hand side. And this is what incorporates the seed territory. And so it's from our seed that we start to build out and expand our content universe using Liz LAE or Liz Lookalike Expansion, creating fully fledged territory within high affinity environments. So how we do this is in two ways. So first of all, we start with semantic expansion, which is where we look at sourcing semantically close terms that share the same meaning as our initially sourced list within our C territory. And then we move on to co-occurrence expansion, which is where we look at capitalizing terms that co-occur often and so forth, so forth share the same meaning um, as our initially sourced um, list within the seed territory. So very simply put, we expand the territory both by semantic analysis and by co-occurrence and frequency of terms and topics. So once we define the content territory for a brand, how do we move from contextualization to integration and ensure that a format and creative message is perfectly placed within publisher content? So. In the same way that we use Liz to mine a brand's web page, um, we use Liz to understand the different cookie signals of an article. So we analyze imagery, uh, text, tone, et cetera, to understand which different sub-territories a specific article fits better within in order to maximize each impression that's being utilized. And to do so, we follow a decision tree. So using DCO to serve the most meaningful creative to an article page. So the steps are as follows. So first of all, we have data extraction, which is where we analyze the main features of a page. Uh, we then look at brand suitability. So determine the suitability of the article uh, to the brand's objectives. And then we look at article positioning. So understanding the positioning of the article within the total content universe that we've built out for a client and which category and subcategory it would be most relevant to. And then the fourth step is the creator survey. We then set the most meaningful creator to the specific article page. And now the most exciting part of this webinar, and I'll hand you over to Pablo, our architecture product lead, to run through an example content universe for one of our clients. Okay, thank you, Amelia. Thank you very much. Um, okay, so let's uh, let's see now this uh, in action, uh, and we've decided to present to you one example of one of our recent clients uh, that we will call uh, Global Sportswear Brand, um, and let's see what what what, we, what was the, the main objective of the campaign that we wanted to, to develop. So they wanted to position uh, the products as the most technically sound shoe, right? So together with the client, we decided to act on two different axes on this campaign. So the first one was to capitalize on one of the key pillars, which was the, the running pillar, right? So make sure that we understand what are the trending topics uh, around the running pillar and what are the surrounding topics that we could capitalize in order to boost awareness uh, and position again, the, this product as the most technically sound shoe. The second axis was to define a, a low-level conquesting strategy. So um, understanding how each competitor is mentioned in the news, understanding what are the most trending concepts and keywords around each of these competitors to craft the specific creatives, craft the specific messaging, and capitalize each, uh, each uh, competitor and each mention to the competitors as effectively as possible. So let's see this in action. Uh, let's start by the by the first uh, the first axis, which was to capitalize the marine field, right? So as we will see, we'll start by the the seed territory that we craft together uh, with the client by analyzing the web pages, the product pages, the value pages, as Emilia was mentioning before. And what we will see is that during the expansion, we will see new territories appearing. Territories around professional advertising, of course, 
and race preparation to uh, confront the highest challenges in, in, in the athletics, right? Where you will need, of course, the most significant sound shoe. But then we will go towards other territories, such as exercise routines, trainings, of course, health and nutrition and wellness, everything related to this core pillar as well. So see how this looks like. Hey guys, I'm back. Absolutely. Thank you. Very much. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, tell me what are insights if these are not insights, right? <laughs> that was that was quite impressive. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Uh, we have a few questions. I've selected personally four. We don't want to like be here uh, twenty minutes in a in a Q and A uh, after all. So uh, if you don't mind, not in non particular order. Uh, there's someone that uh, is is asking about the process of executing the CIPTAC lab. Maybe you, Emilia, want to take that one. Uh, I know that you covered slightly that in the in the presentation. Can you share anything else with us? So the difference between CTAG Lab and other types of contextual campaigns that we all have. Uh, um, about the process. About the yeah, process. what is the process for executing the CTAG Lab? Okay, so typically we would need to understand what challenge or objective the client has. So there's different natures of labs available. Um, whether or not they're wanting to promote certain values. So um, an example that springs to mind is we had an automotive client that wanted to promote their values of being seen as luxurious, innovative. Um, so they wanted to really push um, their positioning across these values. Or it could be a case of um, a brand wanting to conquest against other competitors. So again, auto would be an example where everyone is now entering the hybrid uh, vehicle and electric vehicle space so how can they do so or it's about addressing um, or targeting specific audiences and we can do so via audience profile interest so as you know CTAG has a you know it's quicker the solution so we are proving with that data how we can reach uh, brands audiences in this way so based on whatever objectives a client has we would then devise the content strategy the lab team would present this to to the agency or to the brand um, and then this would act as a media plan proposal and this would be sign off the activity would then go live on the content universe that we've outlined to them um, the agency and or client would receive weekly reporting optimization suggestions and then um, the difference between LAM and a standard C tag campaign is that we offer that designated mid campaign learning session. So um, something that I don't think we mentioned was that with every lab, we offer a brand of studies. So this is where we monitor uh, consumer perception for the brand, um, but also with the competitors. We also look at creative evaluation, how we can improve creative. Um, and then we also provide feedback on the uplift of main brand metrics. So, we wrap all this information in the mid-campaign learning session. We provide a range of actual campaign insights, and then we run the campaign or program for the second duration of the lab. And then we run or offer a post-campaign analysis. So something to note about CTAG Lab is that this really is an always on program. So we recommend that this is for clients who really want to promote their values. They want to own their space. They want to be seen as being better than competitors. Therefore, it really needs to be something that's at least, you know, a two to three month duration. Got it. Thank you, Emilia. I think that you pretty much answered a few questions already that we have in the question box. So thank you for that. That's great. Uh, the next the next one would be, um, uh, you talk about the objectives. Uh, I want to double down in one question that we have about the objectives answering uh, with, with the lab. Uh, what are the like top three KPIs that you can think of that are most important for our customers when when, when doing a lab? Since we have already a few customers uh, that 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 did sit like labs. Okay. In terms of, I mean, the, th the thing with lab is that it's not a performance product. I think that's something that we need to make really clear. Um, it's about answering the objectives of branding and awareness. So really promoting. Um, all those core KPIs that would be used with branding awareness campaigns, whether or not this is um, guaranteeing viewability. We're also looking at attention as well as measuring attention for our clients, um, but looking at answering their core benchmarks, you know, whether or not it's view through rate and so forth. So we'd always bear those things in mind. But I think for us, as I said before, the whole purpose of lab is to really 
engage with your consumers and change the consumer perception. And this is what we do so by the brand of study. Got it, cool. Um, I think a, a nice follow-up question, since you mentioned the difference between performance products or, or, or SITAC lab, we have uh, someone anonymous asking about SITAC lab compared to other contextual campaigns. Can you, can you explain a little bit if there's like an, a difference uh, or so, sometimes I like to call SITAC lab a contextual campaign on asteroids kind of thing? Do you wanna explain <laughs> that better? Yeah, so with, I mean, with, the, with all C-type campaigns, we're using a proprietary um, contextual intelligence, which is Liz. I mean, I think some of the attendees who might be working with us already, so they understand that Liz is where we, um, that, that's our contextual intelligence. So as I said, we look at uh, text analysis, um, full page um, imagery analysis, semantic embedding, um, brand suitability, and so forth. But the difference between lab is that it really is leveraging the full capabilities of Liz. So really with lab, we look at things like um, trend identifications, so looking at when trends start to form and um, there is higher content consumption peaks around a certain topic, which may be useful for a client to capitalize on. And it also includes the benefits of the, uh, the creative evaluation, perception of the values, you know, has this, has this been, moved heavily with the needle in changing consumer perception um, but also looking at competitor analysis as well so these are things that we don't offer a standard within a normal CTAG campaign but with CTAG lab you know all of our clients have access to these um, core outputs and to their own content universe and to their own bespoke content universe thank you Pablo so <laughs> And really, when we when we demo the platform to our to our agencies and clients directly, they really see the value in the data, um, not only just to service their existing campaigns, but even looking at multi-channel activation as well. That's great. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Uh, just to complement a, a bit, if, if you allow me, uh, sometimes I see these insights and these graphs that you put together, and, and as we spoke at SITAC sometimes, is that, that that such such information and such insights, if you go out and and look for them. Uh, have to pay a lot of money to like get them out from consulting or management consulting firms. Uh, here at Citec, we, we we put it together in a in a program that you just require sort of like an investment in terms of like uh, targeting and advertising. Do you want to explain a bit? And I know that uh, it's not public information of how like the the pricing system works or how they can you know get in touch and 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 know more about how to how to start in this program. Also, there's a question about uh, about the clients that already are in use. If you can disclose any any, any client that has benefit or is currently in the in the CITAC LAN program. Okay, so I think there, there are two questions there. So the first one was on pricing. pricing. Yes, so pricing, we do have three levels of pricing tiers: um, a bronze, gold, and platinum. So. With, with bronze, you receive the content strategy, the bespoke services from our lab team, so the reporting, um, the insights, the mid campaign, um, designated mid campaign learning session. Uh, with the uh, gold tier, this also includes um, eye tracking and view quality score measurements. This is where we're looking at the amount of time attention that consumers are actually engaging with your creative and formats, which is obviously very, very valuable information to your clients. And then with Platinum, we're also looking at um, drawing insights from emotional response surveys as well. So um, an example of this would be looking at video attention measured second by second um, for our video creatives. And then the second question that you had was, if you remind me, Jordi, what was that? Uh, some clients. Clients, okay. Clients. So the, the lab um, program launched at the start of the year and in that time, we're working with a whole range of clients across different verticals. So, and um, markets. And markets as well, actually. So this is a global initiative. So we're running labs across um, pretty much every single market within CTAG from Brazil, Mexico, France, Italy, um, the UK. And the core clients that we're working with includes the likes of Sonos, uh, Mitsubishi, uh, Samsung, Visa, Amex, um, whole range of verticals so there's no client that we cannot service that's that's great that's awesome just to compliment to you there uh, emilia if you want to go to our website we have a, a, the first case study feature there uh, beyond like the, the the actual customers that are already on board on syntax lab we have mitsubishi, fe mitsubishi featured uh, there because i think it's quite an insightful uh, first beta customer that 
took the most out of Sita Live without the standing results. Um, and that, that's that's it for today. I feel like, guys, if you want to go to the last slide, Pablo, thank you for your time and thank you for being with us. Emilia, Pablo, uh, you know you know me. Uh, you're great doing this sort of presentations and putting the insights and, and, and leveraging the insights to untap new opportunities for our customers. You're doing that in, in, in your everyday uh, work with, with customers and that's that's really good and we're getting a lot of good results. If you wanna yeah, say goodbye to the audience, feel free. Mm -hmm. Bye guys, thank you for your time and attention. Thank you very much. Thank you everyone, see you next time. <laughs>